Anyway, this is SCP Doki Doki Anomaly. There is no title music. Uh, I believe it's a. It, it looks like a dating sim. I'm pretty sure it's a dating sim, and that would also be implied by the uh, achievements. Like I said, there's one for I think dying, and then one for a smooch from each uh, SCP. Uh, I the only one I'm familiar with is from the uh, list that I know I'm familiar that I remember I'm familiar with is SCP-173, but they do list the numbers for all of them at least in the achievements. All right, the first recorded death associated with SCP-8008. Occurred on December 18th, 1997. The victim, Jean-Paul Riveau, 38, Caucasian male, was found pinned under his Dodge truck. Police on scene reported him being smushed to the neck like an empty tube of toothpaste. Ew. Exact wording. Uh, he was also smiling ear to ear and wearing a pair of novelty spiral lens glasses. The SCP Foundation later uh, became involved later when the local detective assigned to the case was also found dead. He's remembered by his own lawnmower, smiling broadly and wearing the same glasses. Apparently this anom anomalous pair of no uh, novelty glasses deemed SCP-8008 allows the wearer to fall in love with literally anything. Oh. Oh. He tried to do some things with the lawnmower. SCP-8008 log, October 6, 1999. The entire first cohort of research assigned to the anomaly has been redacted. First three researchers were killed by an H2 pencil, a diamond necklace, and a pool noodle. Last was found redacted in redacted. Redacted. I'm not used to pencils being referred to like by their uh, hardness number. But yeah, okay. All the data after that threat after that has been expunged. Alright, a quick save here. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, okay, this is SCP-173. I shut the SCP-808 case files in disgust and tucked the folder under my arm. Who did I piss off to get assigned to an anomaly with a 100% casualty rate? Must be because of the SCP-458 incident last month. Stupid infinite pizza box. Damn it. The heavy doors to SCP-173, the sculptures enclosure, are already open when I arrive. My assistant, Dr. Theron Sherman, smiles briefly at me as I enter the room, then returns to reviewing his notes. He flips his pen in an elaborate loop between his fingers. His nervous fidget. The dozen D-class inmates inside are all staring intently at vaguely, a vaguely peanut-shaped sculpture standing motionless in the culture, cu culture corner of the room. This is like the SCP. This is the photo that went around all the ways back. Which led to a lot of people finding it, and it was the, the that first like first person SCP escape game. That was the start. After all, it takes an instant when nobody has it in their direct line of sight, uh, even a blink at the wrong time, and it will snap all our necks in an instant. Ah, here comes Doctor Fields now from his experiment with SCP-682. Morning. He seems distracted. Morning, sir. Everything all right? He blinks, seeming to refocus. Yes, yes, everything's fine. I look at the strange pair of glasses Dr. Fields is handing me. This is it? I take SCP-8008, the novelty glasses from him, noting how light they are. Just a dark plastic frame and spiral pattern lenses. Dr. Fields wipes his hands on his lab coat as if to get rid of anything the glasses may have left behind. They look funny, but let me tell you. He swallows nervously. They're no joke. Dr. Fields nods and takes his leave. Ooh, all right. I settle into the flimsy aluminum chair the table provided and activate the microphone. No turning back now. I take a deep breath and put on SCP-8008, the novelty glasses. Okay. That's the sculpture. You can tell by the line and the cheek marks. <laughs> the music shift. This is great. Uh, hello. I clear my throat, hoping my nerves won't be too noticeable in the video recording. Hello, SCP-173. Whether she's thinking deeply or completely brain dead, I can't tell. Can you understand me? That was something. I'll be continuing experimentation with you, is that alright? Were you expecting someone else? If she's looking for my predecessor, she's going to be disappointed. They're not coming back. I'll be making the same mistake they did. Definitely Brandon. 
So that's B, Dr. Sherman scribbles something in his notes. I stretch in my seat, settling to the rhythm of the interrogation. Our goal here is to clarify exactly how SCP-808 uh, produces its hallucin hallucinations. Okay, it's just... I'm the spell. And uh, better understand its ionic properties. We will compare my subjective experiences to the audio-video footage in Dr. Sherman's notes. Again, I'll show you some images. Is that alright, SCP-173? Still no response. Am I doing something wrong? What did the previous researcher show them reacting as if to a conversation by this point? Maybe I might just survive this after all. Okay. Show the image of a monarch butterfly in summer. What do you see? She seems distressed by the image, but she's so difficult to read. Next, I show her the image of a human face. And this? She, she's glaring right at me. Sir, what's wrong? I hadn't realized it, but I'd stood up. The small hairs on the back of my neck are standing straight up. Everything inside me is screaming to get away from this creature. There's nothing, I'm fine. It takes all my self-control to force myself to sit down. I can do this. Lastly, I show her an image of her actual face. The blank spray-painted eyes stare up from the paper. Last one, okay? What do you see here? No one. She spoke. You have been getting through to her after all? SCP-173, would you be able to make some sort of sound uh, to let the others know we're communicating? Maybe bang on the table? The twisted body of one of the D-class personnel slams suddenly into the, onto the table, looking up at me with wide eyes. His body is spasming at the sudden disconnection from his brainstem. His head has turned 180 degrees. What just happened? I didn't see. I blinked. The man on the table stopped twitching. His iris is mid-dilated. Around the... Room, uh, the remaining D-class have their backs against the walls. One woman is hyperventilating, covering her eyes. I think two. And me. And me. But not again. Everyone just happened to blink at the same time. I remind D-class personnel that any deviation from eye contact protocol will have severe consequences. Uh, we could see that. Beyond the obvious. Right. I was jump out of my chair as the timer beeps. That's all for today. As soon as the experiments are over, the better. I remove SCP-808, take a moment to wipe the sweat from my face. Without the glasses, I can see SCP-173 as it actually is, a monster of concrete and rebar, looming right in front of me. The corpse on the table seems to be staring at it, afraid to look away even in death. I must have watched the video footage of today's experiment a dozen times now. No evidence of the young woman I'd seen. I scrubbed through it again, looking for any sign of mental deterioration. Would I even know if I was seeing it? Perhaps tomorrow I'll ask Dr. Sherman to share his notes with me. What? Get 5,000 or die? Oh, I could have done a better uh, move there. I love this. They, they, they basically they made a fucking... Um, got 5,000. Now I get 35,000 or break your legs. Um, what the hell was that awful ass, uh, it doesn't auto, uh, clear, uh, when you get stacks, which is a little annoying, but whatever. Probably be moving faster. Okay, but if there is stuff connected, it will clear it. Okay. Oh, it clears everything connected. All right. A little close on time here. Okay, it is auto clear. I, I don't know. It doesn't auto clear on drop in. Now, if you click on my face, I wake with a start. What the hell? What was that dream? Something about legs and. What the hell? You're welcome? For what? She's gone. Every time I touch my face, terrified that I might find SCP 808 there. It's just me. So, what did I just see? I dress and head down to the cafeteria to get some water. The clock on the wall reads just past 2 a.m. So quiet. If 
find my way to the cafeteria without incident. It's empty but for Dr. Singer, the third researcher in our cohort, sitting over the benches. She's staring into a hot bucket of coffee, hunched over with her elbows resting on her knees. Dr. Singer? She jumps at my voice, spilling coffee on her hands and dropping the mug with a shout. It shatters on the ground. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's fine. It was an accident. She means it, but I still feel bad. Neither of us say anything as we clean up the mess. Eventually, I break the silence. How to go with SCP-096 today? Dr. Singer makes a face as she rinses her hand under cold water. That bad, huh? No. You didn't even talk to me. It's just... She? Dr. Singer pauses for a moment and then blinks. It... Thank you. She turns off the faucet and dries her hands. You were assistant to the previous lead researcher, right? I can't help but ask. She nods. All the data about them was expunged. I was hoping you might be able to... I let my question trail off as I see the paleness of Dr. Singer's face. I don't want to talk about it. Her eyes are cold. But it might be able to help it might be able to help us. It might I said I don't want to talk about it. Suddenly the room rocks at the sound of a distant explosion. And it's a later the containment breach alarm blares the life. Go figure. What the Dr. Singer and I look at each other in horror look at each other in horror as we both come to the same realization. Dr. Fields! We're breaking into a run toward SCP-682's temporary containment chamber. Maybe? Maybe we're not too late. The alarms are deafening. I've only ever heard them once before, at the site I've been transferred from. Fourteen people had died that night. The hallway rocks violently. Fine dust pours from the concrete ceiling, catching in my throat as we run. I cough hoarsely, my lungs already burning from the unfamiliar exercise. My worst fears are confirmed as we round the final corner. All I can see is a cloud of billowing dust and stone debris. Huge shards of rock have gouged the walls. At the, on the far end of the corridor, exploding from the wall that had been SCP-682's temporary containment chamber. <laughs> Hell, ugh. I jump as a hand grasps my trouser leg. To my horror, I recognize Dr. Vita, the fourth and final researcher in our cohort. His lips and chin are crimson with blood. His torso has been pulped by metal shrapnel. <laughs> We barely have time to process this before the, uh, a shape looms out of the new hole in the wall. Oh, is this the crocodile thing that wants to kill everything? Maybe I do remember this one. Ahead of us is Dr. Field standing with his arms raised towards it. I can't see his face, but I know he's wearing SCP-808. The massive Keter class anomaly crawls over the pile of debris. Yellow. Acrid. I think it's supposed to be acrid, not acid. Acrid smoke pours off its body. It spots Dr. Singer and I. My body freezes, pinned by those hateful yellow eyes. My beloved, my queen. He looks so small next to her. I did as he asked. Now we can be together. Disgusting. It snaps Dr. Field up in his crocodilian... Yeah, it was that one. Crocodilian jaw, faster than I can believe. Dr. Field screams as SCP-682 shakes it back and forth like a doll. I can hear his body breaking. SCP-808 flies off and lands near my feet. A wave of desire to put the uh, put them on washes over me. Let's go for it. I resist the urge, too terrified to even move. His screams become gurgles as he disappears to the SCP's maw. I thought I put him on. Whatever. Gunfire from behind 682. I hit the board just the bullets whip through the air around me, sending up sprays of sharp stone where they hit their tiles. I come to my head. Even above the sirens and the gunfire, I can hear SCP-682 shriek as it enters a rage state. The floor rocks under me as another section of the building collapses. Then suddenly, the shower of debris and bullets stops. Even sound seems muted. I decide to risk it. Carefully, I open one dust-covered eye to see a pair of bare, gray feet standing just in inches from my face. After a moment of confusion, it, it, confusion, it dawns on me. SCP-096 had moved into the adjoining cell block for testing. Uh, I cover my eyes in an instant, praying I haven't seen its faces somehow. See, SCP 096's face is certain death. You! Its guttural voice rings through the halls of the ceiling chamber. Followed by, followed, by a, followed by a howl from SCP 096 as it too enters a rage state upon being glimpsed. And blindly begin to crawl away from the sounds of fighting as the two anomalies clash. I hope desperately I'm going in the opposite direction. Something bumps into my hand, something light and plastic. I don't have to open my eyes, oh no, it's SCP-808. Again, my mind screams to put them on and see. I put the glasses on. I give in. I slip SCP-808 over my eyes and only then dare to open them. 
There. A huge chug of concrete strikes me in the back, crushing the air from my lungs in a whoosh. I can't breathe. I can't breathe! My vision goes soft around the edges as the life is slowly crushed out of me. Is this it? Something is pulling on my legs. Something impossibly strong. I feel hands around my ankles. I grasp it. I gasp as the pressure on my chest is released and light returns to the world. Oh. Well, thank you. Got you. I wonder if the others have you. He's gone. I hear voices. I hear Dr. Sherman shouting. Why is he shouting? Doctor, can you hear me? I try to respond, but it turns into a hacking cough. My throat is full of dust. You're all right. It helps me to sit up. I'm waiting while I cough a while longer. Miraculously, I seem to be unharmed. Let's get you to the medical ward. He supports me as I stand. Dancing backwards as we return to leave, I see the slab of concrete that almost killed me. On the trail through the dust from where SCP-173 had dragged me to safety. Why? I hooked up to several machines in a private room. My heartbeat sounds quick and irregular on the monitor. Isn't this a bit, ex a bit obsessive? Or excessive. Blah. Dr. Sherman looks me up at me from his chair in the corner. His lips twist into a wry grin. You know, for someone so smart, you're a real idiot. Heh. <laughs> Fair. I lean back in my nest of pillows. Is Dr. Singer alright? Yeah, she's fine. She had a sense of run when she saw what happened to Dr. Fields. I nod awkwardly. He stands and hands me a glass of water from the bedside table. I drain the glass, not realizing how thirsty I'd been. And the breach? Dr. Sherman sighs at that, then shoves his hands in his pockets. Were around said as they were able to recontain both SCP-682 and SCP-096, but but SCP-173 is missing. They tell him SCP-173 saved my life. This containment chamber was found open. We need to find SCP-173. I think I might be in danger. I th or, I'm sorry. We uh, that was my voice. We, I think I might be in danger. This is as much as I'm willing to ch say. Doctor Sherman's eyes narrow. I'm trying to figure out what the poster on the wall is. On the side there. Oh, I guess it's supposed to be a vase with flowers. Dr. Sherman's eyes narrow. Task Force personnel are already down in the tunnels looking for it. They won't find her. Oh, sorry. It. They won't find it. Right, sorry. Why not? How do I explain it to them? We need to ask someone who was there. Everyone who saw what happened was torn apart, other than you. Not everyone. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Theron, I don't have a lot of time. It's hard to explain. He crosses his arms for a moment and seems to deflate. Fine. I suppose someone has to keep watch over you. Chill runs down my spine at that. I can't help but wonder if SCP-173 is watching even now. There's no time to lose. Alright. Uh, We'll go to S682 because I'm more familiar with that one. Normally it would take days to clear this kind of experiment with the higher-ups. But with Dr. Fields gone... I'm the highest ranking researcher we've got. God help us. We're really not taking any chances this time. Behind me, I hear Dr. Sherman fake a cough to hide his grin. On either side of us, a full legion of mobile task force guards watches us pass. Their black helmets and visors obscure their glares, but I can still feel the chill in the air. These men just lost friends because a researcher like me couldn't handle his assignment. I carefully step to avoid the electric rails set into the floor as we approach SCP-682's new containment chamber. We stop just inside the huge space. Before us sits a massive 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter cube of reinforced steel. Okay, that's not that small. Filled with hydrochloric acid. In the acid hangs SCP-682 itself, suspended between life and death as its body regenerates just as fast as the acid can eat it away. Dr. Sherman pulls out his notebook. As always, he'll be acting as my personal reality anchor. SCP-682. Can you understand me? come to talk to you about SCP-173. A low chuckle resonates through the room. I can feel it in the soles of my feet. SCP-682 flicks its massive tail to slowly turn away from the view screen. You know what happened to it? No response. SCP-682 has now floated so its back is fully facing us. We don't have time for this. I, I don't have time for this. I don't know how we to avoid this. Were you? He watches me carefully as he hands me the novelty glasses. You're not immune to it. I know that too well. With a deep breath, I put on SCP-8008. She 
he's so big. I love that they gave each one their own cute theme, too. This is different from uh, 178 3's. Uh, it takes me a moment to compose myself before I can speak. SCP-682. I need to know what happened during the breach. Ask him nicely, Doctor. Her voice. It's not all like I had expected. Would you please tell me what happened? Before the sculpture comes to kill you? You think that too? What do I get in return for the information? I've never seen such a hostile smile. And what makes you think I won't get you first? In the corner of my eye, I see Dr. Sherman watching me carefully. But I need to stay focused on SCP-682. You cannot be trusted. Yes, it swirls in little eddies around her as she laughs. You're a funny little human. What could you possibly want, anyways? That, uh, that I could give you at least. Sorry. If you were to tell us where SCP-173 is. I can hear the creaking of plastic as the task force personnel shift their weight around the room. Their guns are still lowered. For now. Doctor. Silence! Everyone in the room instinctively, instinctively covers their ears. I want one hour in the sunlight. That is my offer. I relay the offer to Dr. Sherman. Out of the question. You may not have the luxury of time. Disgusting human. Sharp beer from the lead task force member of radio... A sharp beep from the lead task force member's radio makes me pause. He looks at us, then picks up the line. The static-filled screams from the other end are so loud, it has to, he has to hold it at, arm, at arm's length. Reinforcements! Sends reinforcements! The voice is abruptly cut off. I guess they got his ass. Radio goes dead. The silence that falls over the room is absolute. I was not finished with my demands. I want you to accompany me, Doctor. But me? You want me? Don't get any silly ideas, human. Dr. Sherman screwed like a stout waiting for my next words. I'm not sure I have a better option. Let's go for it. I accept. Wonderful. Look forward to it. See you tomorrow. I remove SCP-808 and hand it to Dr. Sherman for safekeeping. Dr. Singer and, I, Singer and I have decided the safest place for them. SCP-682 rumbling laughter follows us out of the chamber. I can't help but wonder if I'm making the right decision, and time is running out. Once we're outside your shot of the guards, Dr. Sherman stops to look me dead in the eyes. You can't go through with this. It might be our best shot. I like that it keeps occasionally blinking too, so it's not just that SCP-173 uh, gameplay element. Dr. Sherman runs his hand through his hair. Alright, fine. I trust you. We should still visit SCP-096. As per protocol, no one is actually allowed to enter SCP-096's containment chamber. The risk of accidentally glimpsing its face is just too high. That's all it would take. SCP-096 cannot be stopped once you've seen its face. It will find you and kill you, no matter what. I kinda remember this one. Because I read through, like, the first 500 of them before, like, taking a very long hiatus. But it's really such a good idea. Around us, the armor task force personnel watch carefully, wary for, wary for any sign of trouble. Dr. Sherman, Dr. Singer, and I stop in front of SCP-096's sealed doorway. We don't have to do this. I roll my eyes at him. Well, unless you want to go on a sun, unless you want to go on a sunset date with a big lizard. Doctor Sherman's face drains the color just thinking about it. Guess not, then. Shall we? Doctor Singer hesitates before initiating the audio link. She didn't say she didn't say anything at all to me yesterday. Don't be disappointed if this doesn't go like you hope. I nod and she punches in the code. Doctor Sherman hands me SCP-8008, looking like he'd rather be anywhere else. Centering myself, I put them on. She's singing? What? It's beautiful. Like a bird. It sounds so sad. Almost lonely. 
You stopped. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, hello? <laughs> no, look away. Look away. He wants us to look away from the console. But, but I can't even... No, look, please. He's begging us. Dr. Singer and Sherman both look awkwardly at the floor. Is that better? Yes. You have a beautiful voice. Please, don't lie to me. I'm not lying, you really do. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Sherman is looking at me oddly. I need to keep this on track. I need to talk to you about yesterday. No. I hate her, don't make me. She screams so loud the speaker cuts out, but we can still hear it clearly through the wall. The task force team leader steps forward, ready to intervene. Stand down. I try to put as much authority as I can into my voice. With Dr. Fields dead, I am the highest ranking official at this facility. Through his visor, I watch the man's eyes flicker between my face and the Class 5 authorization badge. Stand. Down. Task Force man exhales, then returns to his post. I watch him a moment longer before returning my attention to SCP-096. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Please talk to me. You're going to have her look at me again. No, I swear SCP-682 won't come anywhere near you. I just wanted to ask about SCP-173. I just need to know where she... I mean, it went. Can you leave me alone? Yes, then we'll leave you alone. Okay. Just like that? She's gonna tell us? I try not to let my excitement show on my face. I want something first. Damn it. I knew it could be that easy. What do you need in return? On my side, Dr. Sherman looks shoots me a look. I shrug. Her request might turn out to be something we can easily accommodate. It would also certainly be less dangerous than what SCP-682 I asked for. I want a bird. A bird? I like to sing with them. Just like I used to back home. You mean out in the mountains? Okay, sure. You get us a recorded burn song. No! Again, we're forced to cover our ears against the piercing noise. I want a real bird! Real bird song! No one, nobody says anything for a long moment. Eventually, I clear my throat. <clears throat> we'll get you a real bird. We can have it by tomorrow. Then you'll tell us about what happened to SCP-173? Thank you. I take SCP-808 off more aggressively than necessary, and the image of the girl on the screen is replaced by lifeless data. She wants birds. She wants birds. He wants birds. I'm trying to remember what Singer's voice was, sorry. I nod, handing SCP-808 back to Dr. Sherman, who stores him safely in his breast pocket. This is a bad idea. I don't know how, but it is. What other choice do we have? The mental image of SCP-682 looms over us all. I set off down the hallway, signaling the other researchers to, fo researchers to follow. I nod to the task force team leader as we go. Man, this is solemn as granite. Dr. Sherman, we could just we could just wait for the task force to personnel to do their jobs. I agree, but this is if a cloud is hanging over me, blurring my thoughts. Am I just tired? Yes. Or is it something more insidious? Let's call it a day. We're all exhausted. No one argues about that. Uh, we'll talk with us in the morning, all right? Dr. Sherman looks at me, and then Dr. Singer. He shrugs, looking just as, as exhausted as I feel. Okay, we'll get you back to the medical ward. My eyes are closed just as soon as I'm tucked into bed. What a day. Everything swirls around my, uh, in my mind as sleep overtakes me. Well, here we go again. Oh. Oh, it's, it, now it's a rotational. Thank or they just whatever the arrows are being weird oh, you get out I don't want to be here I would love to get out oh. get 25,000 or die all right um I gotta be faster than this
Also, the way the way it's shuffling the images is like a little offset, so it's messing with my head. It's a lot of meat. Sizable clearage, is it? Just checking in. <laughs> uh oh. Um. I will kill you. Click on my face. Go. Where am I? Oh great, we got caverns. It's almost beneath the facility. I hear footsteps and shouting. Oh hey, is that? I hit the ground. What happened? I've fallen out of bed. The towel floor is cold on my cheek. What's that nightmare? My wrist hurts, probably ripped the IV out. And the heart rate monitor, considering the alarm telling me I flatlined. The door to my room flies open. Doctor! Look up to see my assistant silhouetted in the doorway. The next moment, he's at my side. Oh, thank God. I thought. I'm fine. Just a nightmare. It looks at me strangely, somewhere between concern and relief. Some nightmare. Come on, let me help you. I'm still on the edge of, my uh, of the bed, rubbing my sore wrist. The morning shift nurse arrives a moment later to check my vitals. Dr. Sherman hangs back, fidgeting with his favorite pen. Healthy, healthy as a horse? The nurse forces a smile for my benefit, but says nothing. Then Dr. Sherman and I, and I are alone again. It was SCP-173. Dr. Sherman looks up at me. In my nightmare, that is. He's down in the tunnels. I think I even know where. No, you don't. It was just a dream. I'm not sure anymore. I sigh, weighing our options. We could give SCP-682 its hour of sunlight, and pray it doesn't kill us all in the process. Or give SCP-096 its bird, and pray it also doesn't kill us all in the process. All our options kind of suck. Dr. Sherman actually laughs at that. You're right about that. So what should we do? Alright, so we got three options. I'm going to save at the options. There we go. That way we can just try all of these. Let's try 682 first. The lift deposits us on the roof of the facility. SCP-682's containment cube is already waiting for us. The wind is surprisingly cold up here. How long has it even been since I've gone outside? Summer slipped away without me even noticing. Now the sun is setting too. I sit in the chair provided next to SCP-682's containment cube. Dr. Sherman looks even colder than I feel. His teeth are chattering. It's taken most of the day to bring SCP-682 up to the roof to catch the dying rays of the sun. Inside her, inside I can see her paddling in her acid bath, eyeing me through the small viewport. She almost seems excited. I gesture to the lead task force personnel to begin. A woven tarp of electrified wire draped over the containment cube humps to life. Enough electricity to power a small town sizzles through the exposed wires. Enough to vaporize anything that, that it comes into contact with. Hopefully enough to slow SCP-682 down. The sealed top of SCP-682's prison is open slowly. I can't deny a part of me is excited to see her again. She surfaces, lifting her snout to catch the last of the sun's rays, but not far enough that she'd contact the deadly wire net. Around us, the task force personnel shipped, checking the safeties on their weapons. Off. They're making sure their safeties are off. Dr. Sherman hand me, hands me SCP-808 without prompting. He clearly wants to get this over with as quickly as possible. Just as I do. Beginning the experiment. Without hesitation, I put on SCP-808. Jeez. I stopped that thought to its tracks. I'm stronger than this. I need to resist. For those unfamiliar with this SCP, 
682 is this lizard creature that hates everything and wants to kill it, so they and it regenerates it like so they keep it in a hydrochloric acid bath constantly. So it's they kind of mentioned it, but like if it's too busy, like it's too weak and too busy regenerating its flesh constantly, hence why some of it's missing to uh, uh, enact whatever vengeance it wants, which it, I don't think it ever has explained. It's very recalcitrant about discussing it, but yeah. Ready to talk? Do I allow no peace? You made a promise. Tell us what you know. You know how I came to be here? No. No one knows scp 682s true origin. Might I be the first to learn? Come, run your fingers through my hair. You shout, chat. Wouldn't I just burn my hand off? Go for it. I slowly walk towards her. Towards the edge of the roof. Dr. Sherman falls behind me, as if dragged by a tether. I'm able to see over the edge clearly now. It's a very long way down. Well? You really are stupid, even for a human. I brace. The attack doesn't come. She seems peaceful. I run my fingers through her thick green hair. It's coarse, more like fur than hair. But not unpleasant. The cold wind catches my lab coat, making it flap around my knees. The red sun illuminates the curve of her silhouette. Do you really want to know about me? I'm surprised about how uncertain she sounds. Sure, I mean, if you're comfortable. Silence stretches between us. I am very old. You speak so quietly I have to strain to hear. Everything decays but me. I don't know what to say. Do I try to console her? Something in her posture warns me not to. I am the wrath that stalks mankind. I am death everlasting, but I am lonely. You're lying. This is a hallucination. hallucination. Not real. I die? I'm not sure anymore. I will tell you where the sculpture is if you want. Or you can forget about her, and I will protect you. Your choice. I'm not sure what to make of her offer. It does sound nice. Let's go to protect me forever. Alright. I take a cautious step forward. I accept. Really? You'll stay? If not, stepping forward again. Doctor, please. Slap him away. I didn't even look to see the expression of his face, but he doesn't reach out again. I'll stay. I'm lifted off my feet by a sudden explosion of light. Electricity cackles through the air where it contacts SCP-682's real body. The edge of the roof comes and goes in a sickening lurch, and then I'm falling. Falling. Oh! Lost my neck. Alright. Well, let's try that again. So we got the death achievement. Alright, so we'll resist the temptation. I'm trying to get smooches. That's what we're here for. Alright, so we're gonna pat her hair. I thought the death the death was only like through an encounter with uh, 173, so I can't. It's not like you're thinking. SCP-173 is gonna kill me if I don't find her. I just want to put her back in her box. I promise you'd promise help with that. So I did. These images. Oops, I think I skipped one there. In my mind, I cover my eyes. The light of sitting sun is suddenly blinding. If I'd spent hours in complete darkness. I know where she is. SCP-173. I jump, almost having forgotten she, he was there. Yes, I can find her now. Thank you, SCP-682. The wind gusts as the last of the sun retreats below the horizon. I love this. 
Her expression darkens with the sky. Time is up. I look at her strangely. Her hour has only just begun. A sudden concussion to the air strikes me in the back. I fly forward and... I open my eyes to find Dr. Sherman huddled over me. The smell of acid burned flesh hits me immediately. Darren! Dr. Sherman doesn't respond, other than to carefully pick up SB-808 from where it's fallen nearby. I tuck the anomaly over into his uh, breast pocket. You're hurt. He shakes his head. I'm fine. His breathing is shallow. Did you get what we needed from it? Yes, I did. Dr. Sherman sags with relief. His face contorts with pain. We need to get you to medical. This an explosion marks SCP-682's path of destruction as it escapes into the facility. Dr. Sherman shakes his head. No. Not safe. We have to finish this. He's right. There's only one path left to take. Into the tunnels. We prepare for the descent into the tunnels beneath the facility as quickly as possible. It's deep into the night by the time we're ready. Dr. Singer, Sherman, and I are kitted with industrial strength flashlights and rations, just in case. We're also outfitted with head-mounted head radios, which should work even deep underground. I feel like a D-class. I grin, but Dr. Singer is so stone-faced. The six task force personnel assigned to us don't seem to find it any funnier. D-classes are like prisoners on like uh, with life sentences and stuff that they use as basically guinea pigs. And uh, test subjects because they're expendable by the uh, SCP standards. We tried to convince Dr. Sherman to stay behind, but he insisted. The acid burns had been superficial. Painful, but he would make a full recovery according to the nurses. At least we know where to find SCP-173 now. We just need to stick together and everything will be alright. Except for the except for the giant murderous lizard. Right. Except for that. Great. He's fiddling with SCP-808, which is tucked into his breast pocket. His face is unnaturally pale. Probably just nerves. We head down the last flight of stairs into the tunnels. Down here, the metal doors give way to rough stone. It's humid down here, and cold. Every time I exhale, a little cloud of water vapor is illuminated by my flashlight. We travel for some time with the seemingly endless tunnels, always heading down. We pass through several task force waypoint camps, which have been set up to coordinate the search. The men watch us with dull eyes. There are no injured among them, but what they're tracking doesn't leave injured. Down. All the way down. Must have been at least an hour. My shoulders are aching from uh, the tension. We come to a passage with nearly a dozen offshoot tunnels. I point to one, knowing beyond a doubt that this is the way we need to go. Um, we all stop in our tracks, suddenly on high alert. Task Force personnel scan the darkness with their gun-mounted flashlights. The slim beams of light are insignificant in the oppressive blackness. What is it? Where's Sherman? We all look at each other. Dr. Sherman isn't here. We need to backtrack. We have to. Nobody move. He says it so calmly that everyone freezes instantly. Her eyes are so wide as she uh, looks among task force personnel. They look equally terrified. Ah. Out of nowhere, a pair of massive jaws closes where Dr. Singer had been a moment earlier. Two of the task force personnel are crushed in the next instant as SCP-682 drops from the ceiling. The rest open fire. Ah, pathetic. She swings her tail around, cracking me hard in the back. I go down, then I'm running. I pick a tunnel at random. Anything is better staying where, than staying where I am. Not even sure where we're going. Down. We're still going. I run as fast as I can. My lungs are burning. My legs are screaming. A sudden drop of the path sends me sprawling. My wrist! A wave of nausea rolls around me as I curl on the ground, protecting my arm. I can't. I look up. This is the cavern from my dream. And there at the far end is SCP-173. I almost don't even recognize it. And there in front of it is Dr. Sherman. There. He looks on a... What? Where am I? The place seems familiar. Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... Told you to. Oh, hi. That's ain't great. 
Not particularly. Uh oh. How'd you find us? Ah ha ha ha. Stupid are you? You have to trail in their dreams. Fair enough. Oh, nice uh, neutral uh, pronoun there, so. You can get monster smooches no matter how you were present. With 096. So, what we had. It was real. I'm sorry. Thirty-one thousand eight hundred points, or what the hell is going on here? Oh, that was good. Damn it! Slamming is not making my life any easier. I don't think we're gonna make it. I can't move. Was she telling the truth? Did you also spend time with 096? I forget to mention it. Don't bother. I can see it in your eyes. Well, since I went out, I might as well have some fun. <laughs> Final two researchers were never recovered from the tunnels. Dr. Sherman was found wandering in the dark sometime later, wearing SCP-808. He's physically unharmed, but redacted, redacted by the redacted. SCP-173 and SCP-682 have been recontained. Next cohort of researchers will be brought in shortly to continue work on SCP-808. The rest of the data is expunged. Alright, so basically you got to stick to one or the other to get their smooches, I guess. But at least now we know the options. And, um... I feel like I'm gonna leave the rest to y'all. I'd say go pick this up. This is this is this is a both this was both longer and cuter than I expected. And uh, I never did remember what the puzzle game reminded me of, but yeah, not bad at all.